Hello friends. Today again we are going to do a, another video on which involve uh, daytime time intelligence functions. The question was posted on Power BI Community Forum where a user wanted to see the sales or production of last X number of weeks, let's say five weeks for the same date based on the last transaction date. That is the key here. So let's say the daily there is a records get updated in the table and based on the last transaction date, uh, today it's a Friday when I'm doing this video and let's say the last transaction date is uh, in Monday and the user want to see last five Mondays including uh, the last transaction date. So let's say if the last transaction date is on Tuesday, even we are on Friday today, you want to see from that Tuesday to the last five Tuesday. And if tomorrow the data comes in, let's say there is a new record which comes in a last transaction date is Friday, then we want to see the uh, last five weeks from Friday. Basically comparing the same days when the last transaction happened, go back last five days. Um, we're going to use uh, date time functions in here. Um, let's get to Power BI. All right, here we have, this is what user provided. Um, so sales by date, uh, this is what he put in the box, what I currently have. So it sees the sales by date. And this is what user is looking for. So the last transaction date is May 31st, which I think is Monday. And he wants to see the last five uh, weeks, including the one the, when the last transaction happened. For now, the way a user achieved this uh, graph here is by filtering on the day name Monday because uh, the last transaction date is on Monday. But that is of course not a scalable solution and uh, he wanted to be dynamic which makes sense and uh, so we are going to do that and uh, start writing the measure. So let's uh, get started and first we will uh, the first and the foremost thing is to uh, get the last transaction date from our our table uh, what are you call this same day sales measure B. and so first thing is when the last transaction happened in our uh, in our transaction table which we can simply use max I think the uh, date is pop date. I don't know what the data is. Um, and then we will remove any filter um, coming to this transaction table. And this should give us uh, last transaction date. If I put this in quickly here in the KPI, I love to see as things happens to see what result we are getting. Of course, this is not going to be a surprise, but still good to see here. Okay, so that is 31st, 2021. And uh, now continue with our measure. What we're going to do here is we're going to take advantage of time intelligence functions. So let's uh, put uh, one store value in one more measure here. Uh, uh, let's call it number of weeks we want to move back. Let's say that's five. And this means also including current, right? It's not like a, um, it's like how many weeks we want to go back. And uh, the reason I'm storing it here because then we can change the value or if we use what if um, parameter then we can just change this value and uh, with the what if parameter value and then uh, we will we, we don't have to change the rest of the measure. So it's going to be pretty simple here. What we need to do it's total sales is, is a measure which is simply a sum of sales. What we need to do is so there is a function called dates in period. Uh, dates in period function, uh, you can read on Microsoft Doc, I'm not going to talk too much into it, but it takes, let's see what parameter is take. So dates in period needed a, a 
first parameter is date, so which comes from our calendar table, which is calendar date. And this, it's a starting date. What is the starting date and the number of intervals it has to go back. So the starting date in, in our case is going to be uh, last transaction date. And then number of intervals, you can give a positive or negative. In this case, we want to go backwards so we can change it to a negative. So that would be how many days we want to go back. So we want to go back a number of weeks we decided, which is five. So five multiplied by seven. So we want to go back 35 days. So what that would be negative number of weeks multiplied by, we know there's a seven days in a week. So we go 35 days. So that what this will do, so based on last transaction date, which is on 31st May, 2021 at this point of time. So this, this will return, uh, it will move um, from 31st of May till minus 35 days, whatever that dates look like. We can pre-calculate that date as well if we wanted to, then we can use dates between, uh, but we're taking advantage of uh, dates in period. And here then, what is our interval? Uh, we want to go back uh, these many number of days. So this will give us, uh, let's see what we get here. If we put it in the, uh, of course this is not going to work, um, but uh, let's put uh, dates on our x-axis and oh, actually maybe keep it a uh, table simple, to, so it's easy to see. So date and then our measure, which we just created, which is same day sales measure. So the first thing is, what we're getting is we get 31st. We are going back 35 days, but we are getting the same number. Um, so that itself is a problem. So that means, uh, uh, I see. So we need to pass the uh, filter. We, we need to keep the filters uh, from, from the row. So that would... do it okay so let's see what happens so now we will see the sales of the same date yeah now the numbers are changed they are not the same and uh, we have 20 on 25th i think those numbers will match with this bar graph so if we pick any date which is may 23rd it has uh, 150000 so that's what the number is um, 150000 and okay so this is now giving us all the dates, uh, dates in between going back a uh, number of days. But what we need to do here is we want the same day, uh, right? Because based on the last transaction date and the user who gave me this file has a calendar table uh, with a day of week starting Monday as the first day. So you can have the weekday calendar date making it two. Two means the week starting from Monday. If you really want to take a look at that, if we go in a calendar table, if you see here Monday is as the first day of the week and if I change it to one and uh, this makes a Monday as the second week, Sunday as the first week uh, day of the week. So the user has a, a starting uh, day of the week is from Monday. So I, I just keep it there like that. Uh, but I just want to show what the day of week is. And now in this one, what we need to do is uh, we have to further add the filter. And now this is giving us all last 35 days basically, but we need to filter it further down for the same day, which is should be pretty straightforward from here. So we can have a calendar uh, day of week. And then that would be the same weekday of our last transaction date and this starting from the same day of week uh, starting Monday and now if we look at this uh, sorry go back to the table so here you go so now we see that as you can see clearly uh, we are on 31st and then we are only seeing a one week back so this is giving us the last five weeks and if I go back to my measure 
and I change it to last three weeks for example including current uh, so our measure is now returning um, uh, last uh, including three three weeks now because I cannot make the I cannot test the theory here because I cannot change the I cannot append the data so we can further extend this um, this to test it what I did here is or uh, just to showcase that this is working as expected uh, let's make it a bar chart uh, I added a a slicer a calendar for slicer which is not uh, have a relationship with my transaction table so what does that means is that when I choose any value from this it would not filter my transaction table uh, what I can do here is I can use this as in a slicer and basically I can make it okay either you pick if if you don't select any value from this date then use the last transaction date but if you selected any date from here use that to go back last x number of weeks so what we can do is we can go back to our measure here and then we can have okay we know our what last transaction date is now what we can do is we can say what is our selected date in the measure which will be selected value from our measure which is calendar uh, from our uh, slicer which is calendar for slicer date and if no value selected or more than one value selected then we can use last transaction date as the default value so that if user does not pick a value then use the last transaction date if user pick a value then use that value and go back x number of weeks so what we need to do here is we need to change our uh, this part of the code instead of using last trans transaction date we use the selected date so I'm going to replace that to two places one is to get the number of uh, days in period and the second one is to the day of week so now this is more dynamic a user can um, if no value is selected then use the last transaction date if value is selected then use that but we can test it here uh, if I pick let's say 16th so now my last is 16th and 9 and 2nd that is like going back to the two weeks if I pick 21st so my selection date is 21st 14 and 7 and if I don't select anything so it is going to May 31st because that is the last transaction date now with this measure when the new data comes in the transaction table if no value or no value selected on the slicer by default it will automatically pick the last transaction date from the table and then show compare the same day sales for last five number of weeks you can have a what if parameter in here to go make it more dynamic like go back three weeks go back four weeks or six weeks whatever you want um, i hope you find this uh, video useful uh, I will be doing few more videos on time intelligence. Stay tuned, subscribe to my channel. Until next video, have a good day and have a great weekend. Bye for now.